Instant Monsters presents Foam Latex Application. Part 2 Coloring. In part 1 of this video, I showed you how to apply a foam latex prosthetic. Now we will complete the makeup by adding color. Here are the materials you will need to color the prosthetic. Rubber mask grease paint in several flesh tones, as well as a reddish sunburn color. If you don't have rubber mask grease, you can make a poor man's version by mixing a drop or two of castor oil into theatrical cream makeup. Makeup sponges. Makeup brushes and a spatula. A mixing palette. Color-free powder and a powder puff. Alcohol activated makeup. 99% alcohol. Don't use 70% or 91% alcohol. It won't dissolve the makeup properly, and you'll end up with little chunks of undissolved pigment. Finally, you'll need a few cheap paint brushes with the bristles cut short. To prepare for coloring, tear chunks off of the ends of several makeup sponges. You're doing this to give them a random texture, and to eliminate the straight edges along the sides, which can cause lines in the makeup. Next, scoop some sunburn color rubber mask grease onto a palette. I'm starting the color with a layer of the sunburn makeup. I'm doing this because everyone's skin, no matter what color, is influenced by the blood and muscle underneath it. Since the foam latex is basically a white sponge, it's important to simulate this color before applying flesh tones. Extend the sunburn color slightly past the edges of the prosthetic and feather it into your skin. Once you have the entire prosthetic covered with the sunburn rubber mask grease, give it a heavy coat of powder. If you skip this step, the grease paint will smear everywhere. Now it's time to mix the flesh-colored rubber mask grease. Sometimes you'll get lucky and find a shade right out of the container that matches your face, but you'll usually have to mix a few shades to get a good match. If in doubt, go for a shade lighter. It's much easier to darken a light shade than it is to brighten a dark one. Apply the flesh-colored makeup to the prosthetic the same way that you did with the sunburn color, feathering the edges into your skin. Use a brush or a cotton swab to get the makeup into any difficult areas. Once the flesh-colored makeup is in place, apply another heavy coat of powder. Now it's time to deepen some of the lines and contours. Scoop a color that's a few shades darker than the flesh tone onto your palette, and thin it down by spraying some alcohol onto it. Brush this thinned grease paint into any wrinkles or contours that you want to darken. While it's still wet, blot away any excess with your finger. This is where a good knowledge of anatomy comes in, especially if you're creating a zombie, old age character, or any other makeup that requires the face to look sunken in. Now that the rubber mask grease is in place, it's time to add alcohol color. Right now, the prosthetic is still one solid color. It's close enough for a dark haunted house or costume party, but in bright light, it still looks like makeup. Look at your own skin. You'll see that it's not a solid color, but a mixture of many colors all jumbled together. You're going to recreate this by using a few additional skin tones to add some modeling and freckling to the makeup. Spray 99% alcohol into the palette of alcohol-activated makeup. Use a lot of alcohol to really dissolve the pigment so that the colors blend into each other. Then, scrub a cut-off paintbrush into the liquefied makeup to pick it up. You're going to flick the bristles of the loaded brush to spatter the makeup onto your face. You can do this spattering technique with thinned down grease paint, but alcohol makeup works a lot better. Spatter on three or four different flesh tones that are similar to yours. This will give you a good, uneven tone. We didn't push the camera in close enough for the spattering to really show in this video, but trust me, it's there. Once the flesh tones are done, I'm going to spatter a blood red color around the wounds. For this spatter, I'm not using much alcohol, because I want the flecks of makeup to be much more distinct. I 
I'm using the same blood tone to paint the insides of the wounds. If you want them to seem deeper, you can add some dark blue to the inner areas. Now that the makeup is done, all that's left is to paint the dice. I waited until the end for this step because I knew they would get covered with flesh and blood-colored spatter. Once the dice are painted, a quick application of blood is all the makeup needs. In part 3 of this video, I'll show you how to safely remove the prosthetic at the end of the day.